organized way. Thank you very much. The different types of proposals. It is what we are on and I want to appreciate uh, the colleagues who have joined. We have different categories. I already talked about you said. These are the different sources where you can get proposals. I'm talking about different types of proposals. Now, if I want to write for a grant, what different criteria or what different types of proposals can I find online or after outsourcing or even for you knocking on their door? Okay. We have these categories, which already have the outline guidelines. You just need to simply follow their guidelines. You said they already have their guidelines that you need to follow, okay? The UN, they already have their guidelines. EU, they already have their guidelines. So you follow their keywords when you're writing their, their proposal, because you will download and what are the key things that they want in your proposal? It is what you follow accordingly. That is a type of, uh, you know, proposal. It may be request for application. These are different platforms. It may be request for a proposal. You may apply for them. They, some of them, they just call for application. You apply. It may be a request for a proposal where they request for a proposal and they will give you the proposal format. That is one number one criteria that you can use when you are writing a proposal. Okay, Department of International Development here in Uganda it is too much. Where they fall for humanities, they do projects for humanities, they do projects for for health, the social work. These are NGOs which have come on board. So there is a lot of uh, you know grants which they give out to the communities to help the communities develop. Okay, so you can try to follow their guidelines and then come up with a suitable uh, proposal at the end. I have already talked about that at my preamble that we have National Institutes of Health. They have many projects that they are funding. So can you get one and then you follow that? Okay. Then sometimes members, we can do our homework. You sit on the computer and then you find by luck, you find a you find request for proposals. That's why I say do your homework. This is best by you know, sometimes clear identified, you know, platforms. Do your homework. You may because some of us we are here, you'll find that we don't know where to get these funds from. We don't know where to get these grants from. We always hear Makere every time they have research grants. Mm? KIU, they have research grants. They are writing, uh, you know, they are writing application every month. It is what our team, uh, through the coordinatorship of Dr. Edith, it is what they are looking for, that can we sit as a team? Because it is not a one person's deal, or one man's deal that you are going to sit alone and then write this. It is a long process. So you sit, do your homework, and then that is also one way of getting uh, this research. Show them why you sh they should get attention about your idea that you are proposing, okay? Then it may be an invitation. This is often based on the relationship that we do with different organizations. And we go for different conferences. And then you find that you have also subscribed with them. So whenever they get these grants, they keep on you know, posting them to, to your emails. So this is a, a solo invitation. That is also a type of uh, you know, format that we can use to access this, to do, to write proposals, okay? Understand why you were chosen or invited. Now, like Equisat, we may be invited because we have health sciences, and then they want us to investigate about something because uh, our niche it is in science and technology. Then they may give us that kind of you know challenge that what can we solve for our people in Masaka, in Great Masaka? Then they send you an invitation. Then you write the proposal according to what they are requesting for. 
So dear colleagues, these are the different criteria, and many more we can keep on sharing. Uh, I've just done some few uh, kind of comparison of this, that what are the different types of proposals? Those are the clustered proposals that we can at least now start browsing on internet. You're going to find them, they are there. Deadlines, some of them I have seen, like for, uh, is it for the department, uh, department for international development, they have more. They're even still requesting. Some are, are closed, some are open. But again, you can even knock on their doors by what we have just said right now. And once you also subscribe, you'll find that they will always be sending you invitations. And then you act accordingly. Writing a gland is like playing a game. It is a game. And how do you win? It's about winning and losing. You may, you may say, and that's why we want to encourage you, our dear colleagues, that we should be sending, sending that basket automatically, one-time tea, they're going to take you. And that's why those, uh, those institutions or universities which are trying these grants, you find that they don't write one. You sit as a team and then say, today we are going to generate five of them. In this weekend, in this month, we are going to generate five ideas and we shall write them. And that's why I even call upon Dr. Iris to create for us a platform where we can also sit and then write this. If we are done with this, how do we write proposals? Then I will just call upon that we formulate teams from those people who have participated today and then we write, we give ourselves deadline that by the time of this series, at least we have generated 10 of them because it is a cluster as long as we get the ideas. And those ideas, I'll be sharing them on our platforms that I have already got in the area of Massacre. Now, as we have said, it is a game. You play by the rules. Don't formulate your own rules. Get the guidelines from these funders. Read the guidelines. Follow the guidelines. It is their money. It is not your money. And that's why you can't just come up with your own. Okay? So use the keywords in your proposal that the funder used to describe what they want. Try to use those keywords. If it was in area of youth development and they are looking at sustainability, Try to look into that area. If it is about poverty or heresy or hygiene, try to follow that. Those keywords, once they get them, I'm going to show you the criteria they use in order for you to win that grant. Okay. Uh, what are some of the parts of grant applications? What are some of the key things that you are going to see in grant application if you are to apply. These are just some of them that are at least are based by the, for those people who have over written research proposals, research thesis dissertations. This is just the criteria. You write the topic, the abstract, you summarize the problem statement, the needs as statement depending on what they call it. Some of them, they call it problem statement. Others, they call it needs statement. Goals and objectives of your research that you are thinking about. Methodology. We are going to break some of them down eh, so that we can get this. And then the project management. How are you going to manage that project? That's why it is not one man's deal. Okay? The quality of the key personnel and the institution. Who are those key personnel? Okay, that's why you hear that the vice chancellor is part of the, the team. That's why you hear the, the, the deans of different faculties are also part of it. That's why you hear a lot of people, part the research committee, are they part or you want to do it alone? You may find it losing. Okay, then evaluation report. How is it going to be evaluated from step one, step two? Okay. Dissertation plan. How are you planning? 
How are you going to plan about your dissertation? How are you going to complete it? The reference, the references. How are, how is it according to that funder? How is he interest? Which criteria for them they want you to use? Is it APA or I I triple E referencing style? Okay, these are also very important to follow when when you are to take up a, maybe to apply to that type of you know funder. The budget and the narratives, how will that budget, how you need to sit and then come up with a proper budget because sometimes that's where some of the people lose or gain. You write a budget, you have said that you are going to work on 10 schools and then at the end, you can only manage three schools. And moreover from your report, you said that you will satisfy all the 10 schools. It is not easy to go back to the funder. I will also try to show you when, do you, how do you handle a situation where the funds are now limited? Okay, appendixes. The CVs for those applicants, that's why it is CVs of applicants. So Sama, you can't sit alone and then finish the grand proposal and then submit it with your single, uh, with your single CV, they will just dump it completely, okay? Forms and even they want certificates and even different assurance that even the institution is, is, is with you, has backed you, okay? Certificates from even the local councils, sometimes it is so much promount that even the project that you want to do, you'll be given, uh, you know, access because you may end up getting the funds and then you are you are refused to access uh, those people that you want to help okay so you need to go through all that criteria when you are applying problem statement yes the topic is very easy but the topic formulation comes from the problem statement i'm breaking them down here quickly uh, so that we get the, the 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 ideal setting of a grant application. Problem statement. Why? State the problem. State the known. Describe the gaps and why fill these gaps. Okay. Try to make those comparisons with your with the funders. Okay. Make. Try to make it very clear what idea or a problem I want to examine or address. You need to address it very well. Why is it important and to whom? Is it to, to, to the university alone or it is going to help the whole community? Okay. What other related research stock project has been done? before and why do you mind about those needs? So you, you need to be clear why, okay? What other related research or projects have been done so far? This is when you're formulating your problem statement. And that's why you, you need to work as a team. You work as a team, it is very easy for us to formulate a, a research problem, okay? And then quickly, we shall be done. So once you have the, the problem statement, recently as well, I was working on the, a project with a team of researchers. It was about the traffic jam, how we can solve the problem of traffic jam. We got some funds and then we are supposed to simulate that. We simulated it very well that how do we give a lot that how do we minimize on the traffic jam and what causes those traffic jam in Kampala? And these solutions we are given to through a publication and then the government at least can follow that guideline that we gave them that if you propose, if we come up with these solutions, and that's why you can see that a different setup of uh, flyover are coming on board through those research that you do. And moreover, you have received some money, you go and take different, uh, different, you know, you go outside there and then correct the data, and then this data, you come up with a solution. 
out of it. So you need to have a problem you have seen. Another point when we are formulating, a grant is not an idea. It is a plan that should convince yourself, your team, your institution, and then the fund. It is not just an idea. It is a plan that which will convince yourself that surely if we are to bring you this, it will solve the following. Okay. I hope we are still together and feel free members to put in the group if we are moving on well. Uh, I saw some, okay, please, uh, we, the moderator said that if you have any question, feel free to engage in the chat room so that we can move on well. Okay, now, the first, first statement is the problem, okay? We are still continuing about the formulation of the problem statement, okay? Then clarify the problem by defining both the behavior, okay? This is very important. Formulate it very well. Clarify about by defining both the problem and what is the norm? What is the norm before, okay? and the behavior that you may find that suitable if you bring it on board. State that is placing the need, which is hopeful that the need the finder is also trying to address. So you'll find that the finder is trying to address the problem of poverty in the youth. Can you also try to state it clearly in your problem statement? that once we do this, it will help us come up with this. As you can see in Uganda, what is trading? Myoga, okay? They wrote a proposal and then the funder saw that if we can bless Myoga, it can solve the problem of our uh, poor people. You need to phrase it very well and that's why I said it is not just an idea it is a plan which you can it can convince your team and even your station and the founder that once you have brought it on board at least we we are getting solutions out of it the goals and objectives we have already asked ourselves why now we start asking ourselves what be bold and be realistic about your objectives Follow the logically, follow it logically from the statements of need. That is, follow it logically from your problem statement. Your objectives and the goal are just extracted from what you have proposed as your idea. And that idea we have just said, it, it is not just an idea, but it is a plan. Break down the goals into something measurable, the outcomes of which can be measured to determine the actual output, actual result that you get at the end. So we need to state these things very clearly. How are you going to accomplish this? Okay, so they need to come out clearly in our objectives, but through the teams automatically, we shall be in position to move on. Plan of action, project design, or methodology. Having seen our problem statement, having seen our objectives, now we go to the problems, uh, to the methodology. The who, the how, sorry, the how. When you're talking about the how, this is given the most points <laughs> by the funders. Whatever we have done, but they look at the, your methodology that you are going to use. This is where we get more points and then you can earn. That because many people are writing from different countries, but if you are giving it abroad, the many people are writing, how will they select you to be the best? So they will look at whether your methodology is convincing 
often poor written. This is where most of the researchers get problems and then they will question you, how sure will you succeed if you use that methodology? Qualitative, quantitative, is it going to be experimental? They are asking many questions from what you have written, okay? It is 40% proposals are turned down because of this, 40%. So we pray that 60% who shall be amongst them that we won't be turned down. Okay. Most detailed length sections of activities, you need to define them. Task-oriented, specific, detailed, that is under methodology. Demonstrate all the steps necessary to complete the project, including the management. How is it going to be managed? You need, that's why you work as a team. Who is the lead team? They want to see who is the lead. They want to see the even the researchers themselves, researcher co research coordinators. They want to see facilitators. They want to see a team because it is not one person's deal. So all that once it is well elaborated, then it becomes very easy for us to come up with a proper, uh, you know, uh, to, to at least to win that research grant. Management and the key personnel, the who, who are those people and why should we give them our money? These are key principles when we are writing a research grant. Demonstrate that you are the right person to this project, to do this project. Are you the right person? The professor, a doctor, you have your master's degree, you have your bachelor's degree, but again, even in your bachelor's degree, you have at least published some papers, you have even if one paper, you have it so that when they look at your CV, these are the right people, that's why it is a team. Because they look at your, you know, how frequent are you in research? Or you just got an idea and then you may not even know how to run it very well. Convince the funding agencies that you are capable of accomplishing this task, what you are saying. That's why you, you define it. That's why the profiling, dear colleagues, the profiling is very pronounced that you profile these people very well, depending on what your institutions have also profiled about them. That's why when you are to win that fund, then they even ask your institution whether these pass, whether these people are with you. And they will even ask you your, your employee ID, meaning that they are trying to link up whether you are from the, uh, the right source. Try to highlight very well the, your expertise. You are talking about health, but you have never, according to your profile, does not reflect whether you have the background of uh, health sciences. You, you're talking about humanities. You don't have any background. But when you work as a team, it becomes very easy because you find for sciences, humanities may come on board, you may then you have different sectors coming on board and even engineers. What if we are going to do some installations of different, different solar panels to help on certain things? Automatically you find that engineers, they will be part of it uh, and many others. Indicate their responsibilities and the level of efforts these are key, dear colleagues, when we are going to start writing and we need to start today so that you see how good to also have won a grant from, and the monies are there, members. It is about us to start and I want to appreciate the team for this. Why your institution? This is the second who. Capacity, experience, why your institution? Yes, some of us, we may say that our institution is still young, but people who are there are very powerful. 
yes, it is very young, but we have powerful people. Why should why should they even make your institution be awarded this fine? It is basing on the facts, basing on the people that the personnel that we have, okay, experience in managing similar projects. That's why the other key thing from the previous slide that I have just showed you that the expertise that you have, are you an expert, okay? Well, some, how many projects have you handed through funding? Okay, Dr. Edith, how many of them? Okay, Natasha, how many of them have you handled? They are seeing, oh, this uh, Dr. Sevagal, how many of them have gone through your hands? Then automatically they will base on those facts and then they will say the following people based on their CVs have ever handled research funds. And that's, the, that's why they are taking it on board. So we need to be very strategic when we are writing this. And that's why they base on all that higher light. That's why you see Makelis, they are coming, but we are going to also try to come on board through uh, this kind of settings if we continue uh, participating. Highlight institutions' capabilities. In relation to the project and even to the, our mission, what is your mission? The mission that we have automatically, it is to help the human capacity, okay? Enabling the human capacity. This is our vision. Then automatically, is it linked up with what you are trying to come up with? I hope colleagues, we are following very well. I'll be finishing in just a few minutes and then we shall have interactions as it is our first meeting. I never wanted to make it so long, but at least we, we hope that by the end of our session, we have got something and we, we need to get the figure to start uh, writing these uh, proposals by even searching online. Capacity to manage, at least I've already talked about it. So why do they choose your institutions? Right now we know. Why do they choose you? Right now, you know that you don't need to work alone. You work in a team of expertise. Some good, some people are good in writing, and that's why we come up together. Evaluation plan. Members, I'm breaking it down what we do in proposal writing. I started from the problem statement. Problem statement helps us to formulate the topic. Now, we are talking about evaluation plan. How do we know if it goes up or down? Our evaluation plan must be very strategic. Address both the, pro the process and the outcome. How will it, your process very well and how the outcome, you show from this process, this will be the outcome. That means from the first process, that is from the first month, we are going to be producing our maybe proposal. Then the second, we are going to be having this outcome. And after the 12th month, we shall be producing the products out or we shall be installing. You need to break them down. And this is where I call upon members who have ever written them, who have, we shall be in need to show them. In our first me in our second meeting, I hope for the next week, I will bring some samples here and then we, we see how those segments move. Tell who will be the evaluators. That's why it is a team. How they will even be chosen. That's why sometimes you find the vice chancellors, maybe evaluators, the academic registrars, they may be evaluators, they, uh, the deans of faculties, if it is in line with what they are trying to come up with, they may be evaluators. You may find that professors that you have on ground, they can work as your evaluators. So all that is very important, okay? As we move on, uh, dear colleagues, we are recording this, even if you came late, we shall be, you know, uh, giving it out so that you can follow what we have talked about today. Define the evaluation design. Use different formats. Logical, result framework. 
come up with a clear what evaluation design. How are you going to evaluate? Plan to evaluate the achievements of each objective that we cited after the problem statement. We went on the goals and all objectives. You need to evaluate them. Have you successfully achieved them? And these reports goes to the funders. Sometimes they send money in phases. So then we need to give you that phase. If you have said within four months, we shall be done. Try to work very hard to be done. Or oh, even they can give it to the institution, but the institution has the policy. And that policy for them, they say, we can't give you the money at once. We give you by the career plan that you have shown to us. And once that plan comes out very well, you will see it progressing. You're going to find that even the University of Lahore may give us these grants. And then we are supposed to tap on them and write proposals. But when you, you evaluate each objective, each step, then they give you more funds until they conclude. Describe the data collections. And how are you going to analyze? What methods are you going to use? All these are specific things that we need to plan in our evaluation. We need to cite them clearly. Indicate how evaluation findings will be will be used. You need also to show that very well when you, you are coming up with that clear uh, formatting. Okay. Then describe evaluation reports to be produced. This describe them. Okay. This is just a simple logical framework by use of a given a project. Uh, specifically, they wrote their goals, they wrote their purposes, outputs, and activities. So you narrate, you give a narrative summary, objectives. Okay, these are the evaluation. These are the indicators. Okay, the means of verifications and assumptions, you come up with a clear format very well. At the end, the funders can look at it and then see this is clearly can be funded due to what you have uh, shown out. Now, talking about dissertation plan, how do you get it out? Meaning, how do you publish it to the members out? How do we give it to other people out? Okay, so we need to be very clear about this. How will you make the research results available to others? That means which platforms are you going to use? Where are you going to publish it? Okay, is it going to be within the institution? Because we may be having platforms where we can uh, publish our findings, our work, okay? Describe your dissertation plan, the target audience. Who are they? Is it the government? Is it the local councils? Is it the community? Is it the institution? Who are those? Consider websites, publications, presentations at the conferences. That's why in the budget, you need to cite them very well. You need to come out clearly. How are you going to, to bring out your information that you have researched about? Is it through trainings and education? Hmm? Is it through public outreaches? Because not every research that you guys, uh, we, we are going to find, we are going to try to come up with that we shall be you know, taking it to websites, publications. Sometimes it may be, uh, you know, community-based. Where whatever you are planning to do, if it is sanitary parts of what, you go to the community. If it is about training, how to come up with them, okay? Uh, our students here, they make liquid soap. I'm not saying that this is worth a project, but it can be worth a project to our communities. If it is about poverty, uh, you know, eradication, something like that, okay? Then you are showing them different skills to the youth. And amongst them, then you have liquid soap as a process of making it. 
Okay, so you can go down to the village and show them how to make different things together. And then that one may not require to make a publication, but where it requires you, please, you do so. That's why we're talking about dissertation plan. Now, why have, after hearing all of that, the continuity. So, then what? Yes, this is very important. Some of us have done projects and then they have ended up in, 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 in dusty bins where no results out. The day you have produced the result, the date stops. That's why they look at that, at that, the continuity. Are you providing something which is going to last only the period once you have published it is, it is done? What happens when the money runs out? Funders want to know. Hmm? Funders want to have a lasting impact. And they want to know how that will happen. He, you are working, that's why I said you are working on a project and then the funds runs out. What are you going to do with your institution being positioned to, to accomplish? Because the funder may say that's what you, you had a budget for. And sometimes you set a budget of uh, maybe 10, 10,000 US dollars or 5,000 US dollars, and then they say they will give you 3,000. Now, from your budget, you need to know how you're going to treat it. Describe how you will propose to continue the project beyond the fundings that which was given to you. You need to also indicate it there that if the funds are not enough, at least we shall be in position to achieve maybe 80%, okay? Demonstrate the ethics throughout to the grant in writing, in negotiation, in implementing, in evaluation, in reporting. Exercise the ethics. The ethics is outside there. You need to follow the ethics of planning, what am I planning to do, okay? Because it may be disturbing to other communities, okay? Be very sensitive to issues. Are there any sensitive issues or potential problems which may need to be addressed? Please be clear. Some people's privacy, talk about it, the project that you are going to handle, if it requires that, please mention it prior. Okay? I have fully consulted on those issues and obtained the relevant hmm, clues which is required. Show them, because if you are talking about uh, things which regards like hospitals, you're trying to investigate about something. Okay? And then you find problems in accessing them in, or even accessing the data. In the conflicts of interest, you need to have the interest in the first place. You may be crashing with a team. Some people are saying that this was the best methodology for you ended up with that one. Those clashes, you need to, you know, to air them out. And then you need to, to come up with a clear way when you're writing. So demonstrate the ethics when you are coming with that. Evaluation criteria. This is the criteria members when they are evaluating us. As I conclude uh, in few minutes, evaluation criteria, they look at the applicants. We already talked about it as I'm summarizing. They look at the application. Is it technical or scientific? Why, what, and how? Okay. They look at the institution itself. Okay. Can it support? Can it effectively manage the resources? They give you the resources, the institution eats it. They give you the, the resources, you eat it before you even produce anything. Okay? Those are the problems people, many, many, many researchers get. They give you some good money and then you go and finish your house before you even uh, you start on it. They give you some good money, you are the principal researcher, you get access to the funds in the first phase. 
before even the, you have eaten three phases for you, you have already eaten the first one. And then you're asking for the second one and no results. So be mindful about that, whatever we are planning. The budget, is it realistic? That is where the problem also comes in when they are selecting. These are evaluation criteria, okay? Value for money. Value for money is very important. Dear colleagues, that's who the way they will start evaluating us when we send our applications. So what do reviewers look for? They look for great ideas, simple, relevant, and they can be implementable, okay? Potential, do they have impact? Great potential for impact, okay? Then another one, from great individuals, let us be mindful about that. We are all great individuals, whoever is here, but what are they looking at? Who have the capacity to deliver their promise? The track record to prove that. That's why we say that we need to have a team. Within the team, we may be having a suitable candidate who has published, who has even managed a certain research grant. Then it becomes very cheap for us. Working with great institutions, this is what they look for able to provide conducive environment for the work. They want you to, to have lectures from morning to evening, and then they want you to produce the, the, the research. You can't. And that's why our policy came out, that the, if you are doing research, the hours changes, and then more hours are given to you because of the research. Able to produce reliable oversight to the work. Is the institution capable of that? Great value for money. I've already talked about this. If the money goes beyond, uh, then can how how do you manage such? This is what the 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 reviewers look for when they are going to give us the grants. Read the call. Review your draft. That means go back and read the call. This is what I'm saying here. Read, 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 and again read. Before you send it there, our team, please, you read. Make sure you understand the call, what they called for. Study the targeted fund, what the funder is targeting for. Speak to the call, identify and use the keywords, rephrase, Rephrase and then the concept, review, review, and again, do not be alone in this. Note the deadlines and respect them religiously. Then automatically it will be very easy for you to manage. No effort in grant writing is wasted. Rejection, proposal, experience and lessons when you get it. Automatically you have learned how to work, write a proposal. Once you learn how to write one, you may never stop, I assure you. And the day you get one grant accepted in your team, you will never stop. And you shall make our university grow. There are many styles that we use in writing, write to the founder, write in correct language, write to inform, write to persuade, edit your work, find balance between the wordless. These are all critical things that you need to think about. If I waited for perfection, I could never write a word. Yes, these are quotes. If you write for perfection, and that's why they always say no perfect person. Dear colleagues, as I wind up in this, the big no's in grant writing are the, the one that listed here, plagiarism, claiming no previous work exists, you are lying, little evidence of gaps, thinking traditionally, 
wanting to do things or nothing, hoping the reviewer will figure it out. Here you write and say, I think they will find out. So these are some of the problems that we get when we write our report. And thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues, for listening. I want to thank you, uh, the moderator, for initiating this series. And I want to thank the team who have spared their time to be here. But we don't want to take this time wasted. And I humbly request that we carry on and start. Without starting, we shall be regretting. I want to call upon the, my moderator to moderate the next. Thank you very much. Thank you, Engineer Kasaga. I, I think we've all benefited from the presentation. Uh, members, if you have any inquiries or any additional clarifications that you'd like him to address, kindly, this is the time you, you can ask or you, you can write in our chat. We have about three comments. I'm going to read them out. Um, okay. Yeah. Let me see. Thanks for the presentation. Now that Equita doesn't have a research grants office to manage the funds, what can be done? And in the meantime, to convince funders as we plan to establish one. Uh, I think I can answer that. We, we currently have a research office. We are establishing it. There are just a few things missing. We are working on our policies, our guidelines and the punishment. So soon we shall have a, a, a research a research coordination office. But later on, we shall also need to have, have a, a separate grants office as, as grants come in and as our documentations grow, yes. So what I can say for now, we are, we are just at the beginning point. We are trying to establish a, a, a working office. So it will be functional very soon. Thank you for asking. Uh, someone is saying very informative session. Thank you. You, I think that goes to the presenter. Being an institution, does it require an approved REC? That is our um, a review, ethical review council or committee. Yeah, I think we need. We we are working to find out how we can establish a a, a review an ethical review board. I uh, was I went to the National Council for Science and Technology recently, and they gave me a contact. Uh, I've been trying to contact that person, but I haven't gotten to room, but we are working on it. However, right now that we don't have a review board, we can use other review boards that are available in the country. Um, if you go to the National Council for Science and Technology website, you'll find that there are those that have already been acknowledged and they are fully functional. So what we are going to do uh, in case we come up with our ideas, uh, in case we, we need them to be reviewed, we shall just apply to one of our available review boards. And then as we are working on now, as, as we get to that staff that should be available, and also as we work on the, on the funding. So for now, we are working on establishing ours, but still, we can use the ones that are available, that are, are fully accredited for now. Yes. Um, are there any other inquiries from members? Please feel free to, to mention, to supplement, or to clarify whatever has been presented. Okay. Um, another member is asking okay. mm, that thanks to the presenter, the goals, the objectives, and the need statement are very key. And the logical framework is important in the marriage process. There is an acronym called SMART for the goals and objectives. Yes. Thank you for suggesting this. Of course, there is SMART. They have to be reliable, timely, achievable. Yeah. So we shall look at that as we start as we start the process. Thank you so much, Engineer Kasaga. Um, I'm going let's I'm going to give us about three minutes to, to ask and inquire. You can also audibly unmute and, and inquire from the from the presenter.
Okay. Oh. Um, I think. Is there any member who wants to add on? Yes. Yes, I'm seeing some people are writing in the comments. You can follow and then see. Oh, okay. Let me go back. Okay. So um, someone is asking, do we have some in-country grants to apply for the beginning? Some examples. Uh, currently, there's a link I had shared before. If you are in our, our Equator action research action team there's a link i had shared a document that detailed some of the grants that were available then so i don't know if you took time to read to look through them currently we are trying to find the grants so when they are available we are going to we are going to avail them yes then i would like to i also would like to seek for clarity if we are having any running calls Currently, we are working on that. We shall let you know when these are available, but it's going to be soon. No one should worry. Yes. Um, Engineer Kasaga, do you, do you have something to add on? Those are the, those are the questions that are in the chat. Uh, what, in the chat. I, I want to thank the members. Uh, surely that this one shows that we've been following and then uh, we are ready to, to team up together. And please feel free to come on board whenever we have these interactions. And at least every week, we shall be having these meetings to see how to enrich our setups in this. But what I want to ask the members, it, this is not about us having these sessions. It is about us being proactive immediately. Let us think about ideas, share them in our research platform. And then immediately, I think the coordinator will help us to coordinate us to come up with teams. Through teams, we can set teams, each team please formulate. And then after formulation, we can submit them to the committee to find out the suitable mm -hmm. one. If we have submitted five and at least two are worthy, we formulate the research proposals, be ready, and then we shall be also giving you the different platform. I have also shown you the different types of proposal. There are those one where you knock, there are those one where they will invite you, and there are those ones that we shall be you know, posting in our group. So I just encourage members to come on board and then we'll move on. Um, thank you, Engineer Kasaga. So another thing, uh, we're at the stage of knocking. So we want to develop our ideas, have our documentation ready. Then we shall invite the, the administration and inform them of what's going on, of the ideas we have. And because each university is supposed to have a percentage of research funding, so we are also targeting that. Then we are also looking at our mother university, the University of Lahore. Of course, if we have ideas and we present them to the to their committees, they will not be hesitant to provide us with the with the funds that we need to carry out our research. So that shouldn't discourage us. If they are not called yet, of course, they'll be there soon. But if they are not there yet, let's have our ideas on paper so that at any point we are done, we're supposed to, we will be able to present them to, to the stakeholders. Uh, someone else is asking, how do we get to the accusatory research team? Uh, I'll I'll, get, I'll again share the link the link to the to that team. I don't know if this person is on the on the staff faculty of health science staff list, but we usually share the, the links there. But I'll share it again. Uh, at the end of these sessions, we shall have certificates based on merit on the attendance and the and the participation of the participants. So I request everyone to be on board. You can also invite other members. You can spread the words we have our flyers in the group yeah you can share them during the week so that we can have people benefiting as much as we we can 
Yes, I think that's all we have. Thank you for communicating. So we, we shall have these sessions every Wednesday starting from 11 to 1. And uh, according to our routine, we, sh we have different members for different for different topics so every time there will be something new coming up there will be someone new coming up to present yeah so i urge you at least we, we attend at least 75 percent of these sessions so that we can learn so what we are going to do after today let's go and think about the ideas we have in our communities and write them down so that the next time we come up i've, I've really learned from this session the framework like the structure of how a grant proposal should run. So if we follow this, this structure, it will really help us to get started. So for now, you can work on your title, you can work on your problem statements, you can work on your goals and objectives, and then the methodologies, yeah. Then as we continue from there, we shall be able to, to continue along. Then I would also uh, request members, if you, you can identify among the members, because you could be having the same idea with someone, yeah? So you can make a team, you can come up as a team. And also feel free to share your ideas with me. The more you share, the more I'll be able to, to team, to make the teams that can work together. Yes, by the end of these sessions, we should have our projects ready and ready for us to present them to the, to the, to the administration and the Senate so that we can seek for funding. And when the calls come up, I'll, I'll eagerly share them to everyone. Otherwise, I think that's it for this session. We shall be able to share our recordings every, on every, at every session. Then we shall also be sharing our the, the, the presentation slides in the, in the research team at the end of every session. Yes, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending. Looking forward to, to seeing you next Wednesday and participating fully. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we can leave, <laughs> I think, if there's nothing else. Okay.